Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com. In this video, you're going to learn how we fix Google Merchant Center suspensions for misrepresentation. This suspension means that Google doesn't think that your store is trustworthy. This could be due to a variety of reasons. When you set up your Google Merchant Center account to run Google Shopping campaigns, Google analyzes your website and your Merchant Center account with what's called a risk meter. They do this in a way to sort of grade you. If you've been suspended, it's because Google sees your business as too risky. It's likely a multitude of things that culminated in you getting a suspension. When my team and I go and fix Merchant Center suspensions, we'll tell the client, hey, this is what we think is causing your suspension. And they'll often say, but Sam, I saw my competitor do this and they're not suspended. And yes, I agree, but it's because Google uses this risk meter and adds up a multitude of different things and that's what gives it the risk meter. For example, let's say that you have a fresh store, fresh Google Merchant Center account, fresh domain name, and you're using a non-branded email to set up your account. These things are all going to add up to a higher risk meter rating. One little thing, such as an unbranded email, could push you over to being suspended. Most of the stores that we see suspended and that we fix often have a multitude of things that cause the suspension, not just one. So why does Google suspend stores? Google doesn't want people running Google Shopping ads that are gonna deliver a poor customer experience for their users. If they feel this way, they're gonna suspend you. Now, we go through this in the compliance lesson of our free Google Shopping course. I recommend you check out that lesson. I'll leave a link to it down below. Now, the rest of the course takes you through everything else you need to set up, optimize, and scale your Google Shopping campaigns. If you still can't fix your suspension, my team and I, we actually fix suspensions with a money-back guarantee. I'll leave a link down below where you can apply to work with us and we'll see if we can fix your suspension. Okay, let's get back to your suspension. Boom, there it is. You have this big red warning in your Google Merchant Center account. You can't run shopping ads until you get this suspension fixed. Most people just give up here, even when it can be fixed. So how do you fix your suspension? First, we need to find out what caused your suspension. Now, there's a big checklist of things you need to check on your store in your Google Merchant Center account. Once fixed, we then request a review in the Google Merchant Center dashboard. We then wait and we see if we got it approved. If not, we go deeper, we scour everything, we see if we can find the issue, fix it, and then we apply again. So what do you need to go and check and fix? We've got a big list that we're gonna go through. You'll find a link to download this checklist below this video. Let's get into it right now. First, your product data and your product feed. Fix any and all product disapprovals, warnings, and errors. You'll see this under the product section under the needs attention tab. This should all be clear. Now we have a video on fixing product disapprovals in our free Google Shopping course. I'll leave a link to that tutorial down below. Next, we wanna fix our business settings. I have a full video showing you how to set up your business settings. I'll leave a link to that video down below. Let's go through the things you need to check. First, make sure that you add all your business information here in the Google Merchant Center Next settings. Make sure this information is accurate and make sure it matches everywhere else on Google platforms and everywhere else on the web. You need to make sure it's consistent with everything else on the web, such as other social media platforms, Google My Business, and any directory websites. Any inconsistencies here are a red flag to Google. This is because they might think that you're lying about your business and your business information. Make sure that your physical address is correct. Make sure that you use a real phone number that people can actually call and hear the name of your business and not your mom. Make sure that you use a company branded email address. Don't use Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, Hotmail. Make sure that your domain name is a real domain. Don't use a My Shopify subdomain. Also make sure that you claim and verify your website in Google Merchant Center. We have a tutorial on exactly how to do this. I'll leave a link to that down below. Make sure that you set your branding colors for your website and your brand, and make sure that you add both logo sizes in there as well. Next, we have our tax settings in Google Merchant Center. Make sure that your tax settings are set up properly for your selling location. This is especially true if you're in the US as the tax settings can get complicated. We have a full video on how to set up your tax settings in Google Merchant Center next. I'll leave a link to that tutorial down below. Next, we have our shipping settings in Google Merchant Center. Same as your business information settings, make sure that your shipping settings match what's actually on your website, on your shipping page. If Google spots inconsistencies here, they'll suspend you, which is why you need to go through this meticulously and make sure it exactly matches what's on your shipping page. And it needs to also match what actually happens when someone tries to check out. Now, I have a video on how to set up your shipping settings in Google Merchant Center next. I'll leave a link to that down below. Okay, that's our Google Merchant Center account. Let's now look at our website. 
When we fix suspensions for our clients, it's almost always an issue on the website. Now, a lot of the things I'm gonna talk about here might not directly cause your suspension. However, we often see that these things add up to increasing your risk meter, which can tip it over to cause a suspension. First, check your website's loading speed. Use the Google PageSpeed Insights tool to check how Google grades your website and check multiple pages. I'll leave a link to this tool down below. Also make sure that there are no broken links across your site. Make sure that there are no spelling or grammatical errors across your site either. Make sure that you have no placeholder text either. Also make sure that you're using custom imagery. Using direct images that other stores are also using can contribute to the suspension. Google isn't the biggest fan of dropshippers. So if you're selling AliExpress products and there are 10 other stores selling the same product, this could be an issue. Especially if it's the same image, the same description, the same title, everything is exactly copied, this could be an issue. Google likes seeing stores that have reviews. So if you can get these on your store, that's gonna be better. Plus, check the apps and plugins on your store. Only use apps that you actually need. We usually check the reviews of the app because sometimes people will get suspended because of an app, they'll find out and they'll leave a comment as a review on that app. Okay, the next one is a big one, your contact information. Google really cares about this because it's a marker of trust. Here's what I recommend you implement if you really wanna get your suspension lifted. Yes, it takes work, but it's really worth it because getting Google Shopping campaigns running can generate a lot of sales and a lot of profits for your business. First, add your store's physical address on your website. Also add in a customer service telephone number, one that Google and your customers can call and get a representative for your business. Make sure that you use a branded email address like hello at yourdomainname.com. Don't use a Gmail email address or any other third-party email provider. Then make sure that you add the email address, the phone number, and your physical address on the contact page and the footer of your website. You can also add them to the header of your store, but this is optional. You must have a dedicated contact page on your website. On this page, add a contact form. Also add in your business contact hours and an estimated wait time for them to hear from you. Make sure that this contact information matches all the contact information across all your Google accounts. This means Google Merchant Center, Google Ads, Google My Business or Google Business Profile. Lastly, make sure that you have an SSL certificate installed on your website. Also make sure that the language of your store matches the customer base that you're targeting. Now that that's done, let's check out our legal pages. Make sure that you have a terms and conditions page and a privacy policy page for your store. Next, make sure that they're unique to your website. A lot of people just copy these pages from another store and forget to change things out like the brand name. Make sure that these pages match what you sell and what you're about. Make sure that the privacy policy page clearly describes how the user's information is gonna be used for the store. Then make sure that links to these pages are added to your footer and your checkout process. Next, let's look at your refunds and returns page. This is huge. Google wants to know what you will do when customers have a problem with the products from your store. If you haven't set up your refunds and returns page, you're going to want to watch my full tutorial on how to do this. I'll leave a link to that down below. Here's what your refunds and returns policy page needs. Clearly indicate the process for requesting a refund or returning an item. Do your customers call you, email you? And how does the refund or return process actually work? Make sure that you clearly outline the processes for different types of refunds and returns. Do you offer exchanges, change of mind, faulty item return or refund? What about damaged products, wrong products? What if the product never arrives? Or what if the customer cancels after ordering? Also include timeframes for each of these circumstances for returns or refunds. Clearly outline the time it takes to receive the refund. Also outline the method of return for the refund. Is it to the same payment method that the customer is paid? Or is it with store credit? Just to be clear. Also make sure what the return period is. For how long after purchasing can a customer return a product? Also make sure that your returns and refunds page is in the language of the target customers. Also, very importantly, link to the refunds and returns policy page on your product pages and in your footer. Next, we have our shipping page. This is the page that tells customers all about our shipping policies. Make sure that this matches what's in your shipping settings in Google Merchant Center. Make sure that it also matches what your actual shipping process is. Outline the cost of shipping for each geographical location that you ship to. This can even be something as simple as US shipping versus international shipping. That's okay. Also outline the time to ship for each geographical location and the postal service used, like UPS, FedEx, or DHL. 
Make sure it's also clear how the customer can check the status of their order. Do they receive tracking information? Do they have to contact customer support to find out? I also recommend adding a section for missing items. What if a customer receives their order but a product is missing from the order? What happens then? Once that's done, make sure to add a link to your shipping policy page to your footer and your product pages. Next, we have our branding and our homepage structure. This is important. Google wants to see that we're a trustworthy and honest brand. Make sure that you have an About Us page that describes the mission and the history of your brand. This is something that gives transparency to your website. Your footer is also important. Make sure to include links to your shipping page, your returns and refunds page, your privacy policy page, and your terms and conditions page. Make sure to also include your contact information in the footer. This includes your email, physical address, and phone number. Next, let's take a look at our product pages. First and foremost, do not make false or misleading claims. I see a lot of store owners coming to us for help with their suspensions when they're making these bold and extravagant claims without any evidence. Google hates this. Make sure that your product information is relevant and up to date. This includes the title, description, and the images. This also includes the availability of your products. Make sure that the product data matches what's on your store, including what's in stock and what's out of stock. This is very important. Make sure that your products aren't dangerous. Google is very wary of health-related products. This is because sometimes if you're making bold claims, you might actually hurt someone with these products. Another thing to watch out for are counterfeit products or trademark infringing products. Also make sure that the condition of your product is accurate and matches what's in your product feed. Also make sure that your product price is accurate and is the same on your checkout, your product feed, and your product page. Next, let's look at the checkout process. Throughout the checkout process, you wanna make sure that all your legal page links are visible. I'm talking about a link to your refunds and returns page, your shipping policy page, terms and conditions, and the privacy policy page. Make sure that these are the same pages that we set up before. Don't set up double or duplicate pages. Make sure that your contact information is visible throughout the checkout process. We recommend using all three addresses, your email, your phone number, and your physical address. We recommend all three, but you really just need at least two. Make sure that you have multiple methods of payment and they're all shown in the footer of your store. Also make sure that the shipping costs in the checkout match exactly what's on the shipping page of your store. Next, make sure that any promotions that you're running in your Google Merchant Center account are actually working on your checkout. Also make sure that the SSL certificate is also working in the checkout. Okay, let's now look at misleading information. Don't claim to be a certified reseller when you're not. Don't use trust stamps on your store without the proper affiliation. And don't make false statements about who you are, your qualifications, or your products. Once we've fixed all these issues, we then do our final checks before requesting a review. Check that your Merchant Center account has a product feed submitted. Google requires that all accounts have a product feed with at least one product before requesting a review. Without the feed, the request a review button won't be available. Therefore, if the account gets suspended, don't delete the product feed. Also check to see if there's a second Google Merchant Center account linked to the one we're trying to fix and to see if it's also suspended. If this is the case, you need to go and resolve the suspension on the original account before fixing the additional account. Deleting the account does not fix or erase the suspension. Also, creating a second GMC account with the original account still suspended does not fix the issue. This will just likely lead to another suspension, which is even harder to fix. So just avoid this altogether. We can only have one Google Ads account and one Google Merchant Center account. Creating multiple accounts when you're suspended is considered circumventing policy violations. Okay, once you fix these issues, we can now request a review of our account. This is pretty easy. Just head into your Google Merchant Center dashboard. Find the big red bar at the top showing the error and click request a review. It takes a few days, sometimes up to a week to get your account reviewed. If you request a review and get denied, you're gonna get put into a cool down period. Use this time to find the cause of your suspension, fix it, and then request another review. Keep trying, don't give up. You want to be very sure that you fixed all the issues before you request a review again. Too many denied requests can lead to a permanent suspension which you don't want. Now, if you're still struggling with getting your suspension fixed, my team and I can help. We can fix your suspension for you with a money back guarantee. We do this for eligible stores. I'll leave a link down below. You can work with us. We'll do it for you. Save all the trouble, make all the changes, and go through the whole process. Super easy. Here are my final tips for dealing with your suspension. Don't try to outsmart Google, game the system, or try to get around the suspension by violating Google's policies. You will lose. 
they will catch you eventually and you'll get a permanent suspension and you'll never be able to run ads ever again. Do not try to create a new Google Merchant Center account. You will get suspended immediately as soon as you try verifying the URL. This is not Facebook. You can only have one GMC account for each domain name. Don't give up. A lot of people try to fix one little thing on their website, they get rejected and they give up entirely. Usually suspensions take multiple attempts to get them fixed. Keep scouring Google's policies, adjusting your website and requesting a review until you get it fixed. And that's it. This video is actually part of our free Google Shopping course. It shows you everything you need to set up, optimize and scale your Google Shopping campaigns to over 100K per month. It's completely free, it's on our website. I'll leave a link down below. Like I said before, if you need help with your Google Merchant Center suspension, my team and I, we can help. We fix suspensions every single month with a money back guarantee. I'll leave a link down below to our website. Get in touch with us. Let's fix your suspension. Also, if you're already generating 20K per month in sales and you wanna to scale to seven figures or more, my team and I, we help with that too. We run Google ads, Facebook ads, and do conversion rate optimization. If you need help with those things, I'll leave a link to our calendar down below. Book a time, we'll talk through how we'll do this for your store. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you get your suspensions fixed and I hope to see you soon. Take care, bye for now. Make sure to click here for the next video in the free course and I'll see you there.